My name's Alexis Van Herkman. Um, if you don't know me by reputation, I wrote the Color Correction Handbook, and most people use me from my, most people know me from my work in color. Um, but I'm also a filmmaker, and I also work with the DaVinci Resolve team um, as part of their product design team. So I help design the app, uh, and I also write the manual. One of the big new changes, the new additions in DaVinci Resolve 16, which we just announced this week, is Frame.io integration, and the thing that's really cool about our Frame.io integration is the DaVinci Resolve engineering team did it. This is an internal, built-in part of Resolve. It isn't a plug-in, it's not an add-on, it's fundamental to how Resolve works. And as a consequence, we're basically using our regular UI to facilitate interoperability with Frame.io. So I'll show you how it works, and this is my favorite demo to give because it's so simple. Um, and just to make the point, I'm going to start with a completely blank new project. So this isn't preset, this isn't pre-built. I'm going to do this. I have an internet connection. Um, hopefully it's working. We'll find out. So first off, I'm going to go to the media page, which if you don't know DaVinci Resolve, the media page is basically our built-in file browser. So this accesses your file system and all of your volumes. And the media storage area here is basically our window into your file system. So we have a list of all the volumes attached to your machine. And you can see we've got a frame I.O. volume. So the way that got there is if you go into preferences, there's a brand new internet accounts set of preferences. And you can see we also added interoperability with YouTube and Vimeo. Those are one-way streets. We can upload to those file sharing services and the video appears and it's just a very nice convenience. However, with Frame.io, we actually let you sign into your account via a window. We remember your credentials, so you only have to sign up once. And we let you specify a cache location. And this cache location is basically where DaVinci Resolve syncs itself with everything you're working with on your Frame.io account to keep everything nice and tidy. So once you've set all that up, Frame.io appears as a volume. And I can open it up and I see my account, and I can open that up, and I see all of my projects hierarchically organized. So I'm going to go into my Big Money Indie project, which has clips from a movie that I'm in the middle of finishing right now called Carry My Heart to the Yellow River, a movie I directed in China last summer. And I have to give a shout out to Gaia Mount for letting me use this footage for this presentation. And if I go into this VR, YR offline media folder, I have a bunch of clips, offline H.264 clips, that somebody uploaded for me, maybe an editorial assistant, for me to be able to access and do some editing on the road. So I can grab those clips and import them into my project. And as when I import any other clips, it asks me if I want to conform the project to that media's frame rate and size. I do. And I'm just going to very quickly organize those clips by file name, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to be the world's laziest editor and just create a new timeline with the Synecdoche Clips. Open that up, and here I go. So I've got an edit, and you know, maybe my logging was so good that this edit's just perfect. So I'm going to go up to timeline, drop letterboxing on the whole project, and go to the deliver page. I'm going to just send this off to my producer and see if magically he'll be happy with this. So with all this set up, all I've got to do is, so if you don't know, the deliver page is basically a giant render window, except it's a page. And it's a queue-based rendering system. So I can set up multiple jobs if I need to render, say, the same timeline in three different ways. I can set that up here. It's a really nice experience. The render settings are where I set up how I want to output my timeline. Up at the top, I've got presets. And now I've got a Frame.io preset. This only appears if you've logged into your Frame.io account. But when I choose that, I get this short list of options. And all I really need to do is type a file name 
you like question mark that's terrible but I'm typing one-handed and then when I click the browse button to find where I want to save this to I actually get to choose an online project and folder and I can see all the folders inside of my project I'm just gonna select the top level I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna get rid of that character Great. I'm going to accept the presets. I'm going to render an H.264. And there's a checkbox which lets me determine whether or not I want to automatically upload directly to Frame.io. Of course I do. I add this to the render queue, and I click Start Render. So DaVinci Resolve starts ripping through the render. And once it's done with the render, it starts uploading. And I can see the upload percentage in the little job listing here. This is a background upload. So I can jump into other pages while this is happening and do anything else I need to do. Maybe I want to start logging some footage with the metadata editor. If I'm anywhere else, I can go into the workspace menu and open up our new background activity window, which is showing me that nothing is happening because the upload was really fast. And if I go back to the deliver page, you can see upload completed. So I didn't have to do anything. It just happened. Now I want to go to that page. I want to check it out. We made that easy. Right click on the job and choose reveal in browser. And we open up a browser window and we go straight to your account. I got logged out somehow. That's fine. Thank God for obfuscation. And here I go. I'm in Frame.io on the web. At this point, I can add a description and do any housekeeping I want to do prior to sending off a link to my client. I have to send links from the Frame.io interface. That's not built into Resolve. You do still have to use Frame.io. Um, but here's what's cool. So I send the link off to my client. Because I exported the timeline, in the way that we've set it up. If my client starts adding markers like this and scrolls around and maybe decides to start doing some annotations, can you move this over here? Because I know you can do all kinds of crazy compositing things. Um, sends me those notes. If I jump back to DaVinci Resolve and go back to the edit page, I can see those markers appear automatically. These are specialized Frame.io markers with those comments. So any comments added via Frame.io automatically pop into my machine as long as I'm connected to the internet and I'm logged into Frame.io as markers that I can manage. Now, if I go into the View menu, we have another new feature where we can individually hide or show markers by color. And you can see Frame.io markers are separate. So if you're a little paranoid and you can't, you can't stand the thought of seeing your client's comments as they're making them, you can turn them off, do what you're doing, and then turn them on when you're ready to face the music. Um, but the other thing I want to show you is if I go down to the next marker, all of those Frame.io drawn annotations get imported into our native annotation system. So the look and feel of the arrows is a little bit different, but everything's going to appear where it should. We're resolution independent, so we can actually manage those differences. And so whatever feedback the client gives you, you get, and it's right in your timeline. And if you want, you can use our shortcut menu to just traverse those Frame.io markers. And you can just pick off those comments one by one, do what you need. Once you've done something, you can double click a marker. And we actually give you a comment window that interfaces with Frame.io. So you can say, great. I love that you like what I did. And if I go back to Frame.io, you'll see that that comment appears. So it's a two-way commenting street, which is fantastic. And that's pretty much it. There's only one other thing I could show you. 
which is if I go back to the media page, if you're in a situation where you've already uploaded, say, a feature length timeline manually, and you upgrade the 16, and you're like, wow, it'd be so great if I could link to all those comments after the fact, you can actually select a clip on your Frame.io account, select a timeline, right click it, and link that timeline to that movie. So we even allow you to link to Frame.io movies after the fact if you need to. So that's our integration, and as you can see, it's, it's not hard. It just uses all of DaVinci Resolve's native tools and methodologies, except that now Frame.io is available as a source of material and as a destination for material, and we have these great hooks to manage comments. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically this volume is, so DaVinci Resolve has always been able to deal with sans and remote volumes, so we just see this as another remote volume. It's, it's a very remote volume, and remember, we have that cache location, so whatever, whenever you download something the first time, we actually just show you a thumbnail and a super low resolution thing that can come over quickly so that you can start working immediately. But as soon as it's downloaded and cached, those low res media files immediately pop back to being whatever res you downloaded. And as far as I know, right now, we only download the uh, original file. We don't give you access to the reduced resolution files. Um, that's probably something they're working on, but I don't know for sure. We work so fast, they don't even tell me what they've done half the time. I have to find it on my own initiative in the app. We're so organized at DaVinci. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. It's just uh, another volume. That's how we treat it. So for, me, for a UI perspective, what's the user curve for clients getting started for the first time? I mean, and this is, this is really a frame IO question because um, we don't design their interface. Um, but I would say from my experience, dropping links on people for the first time. The curve to open up and review, zero. Everyone I've used Frame.io with has gotten it intuitively. Um, the curve to learn how to comment is incredibly low. I mean, there's just a big field. You start typing. Um, here's what I've found is the difficulty in this. I actually compared notes with some other people I know, and we all laughed about it. Um, the biggest barrier I find is not getting clients able to use the Frame.io interface, but, but getting them to actually comment using the interface. Because everyone's so used to sending you a, an email list of nonsense. And it's like, you have the world's greatest commenting interface. Use that, please, you know, and now, now there's even more incentive because now I don't have to manage some email ASCII text list and, you know, like just use the UI. It's so easy. Um, so it's just changing habits is, I find, the hardest thing. One other thing I'll say um, is this project, Shot in China, and I've been working with my Chinese co colleagues with it um, all along. Frame.io is one of the only video sharing services that actually goes through the Chinese firewall. Vimeo doesn't, YouTube doesn't. Um, so it was a lifesaver because I was able to actually share media with my Chinese colleagues and they were able to just log on, access it, and they didn't have to do any weird tricks. So that was a huge deal for me. So any other questions? Well, thanks for coming. Like I said, simplest demo in the world. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you're able to use this to good effect, so thanks for coming.